In the previous video, we discussed about the factors and enzymes in prokaryotic translation. If you want to watch that video first, the link is in the description. Now in this video, we'll be discussing about the factors in eukaryotic translation. First, we have the mRNA molecule that provides the basic information in the form of codons, which code for amino acids. Here in this diagram, we see the triplet nucleotide as a codon on mRNA molecule. Then we have tRNA molecule, which has anticodons for codons of mRNA for base pairing during the process of translation. This tRNA adds specific amino acid to its structure and carries it to the ribosome. And for this catalyzation reaction, we have the tRNA synthetases. This enzyme charges or loads the tRNA with amino acid. And in this diagram, we can see where the amino acid gets attached. And finally, we have ribosome which acts as ribozyme. It is a site for translation and has peptidyl transpress activity. Now let's get to the translation factors. We have the initiation factors, elongation factors and release factors or termination factors. First let's see what are the initiation factors. The first is the EIF1 that's eukaryotic initiation factor 1. It binds to E site of 40S subunit and it also aids in the assembly of EIF2, tRNA, GTP and 40S subunit. Second is the EIF1A. This is homologue to bacterial IF1. It prevents premature binding of tRNA to the A site of ribosome. Third is the EIF2. This has GTPase activity and mediates the binding of initiating tRNA to 40S subunit. Moreover, we have EIF2B and EIF3. Both are first initiation factors to bind 40S subunit and mediate subsequent steps. Then we have EIF4A which has RNA helicase activity. Then there is EIF4B. This factor binds mRNA and scans it for AUG codon. That means it locates the AUG codon. Moving further we have EIF4E. This initiation factor binds to 5 cap of mRNA and it is a part of EIF4F complex. Another is EIF4G. It binds IF4E and poly A binding protein. And finally, we have the complex initiation factor in the name of EIF4F. It is a complex factor consisting of three factors, EIF4E, EIF4A and EIF4G. And also we have IF5 or EIF5, which promotes the dissociation of several initiation factors and helps in recruiting the 60S subunit to the 40S subunit. Then we have EIF5B, a GTPase homologue to bacterial IF2, which ensures dissociation of all factors before final ribosomal assembly. Now let's head towards elongation factors. First we have the EEF1 alpha subunit, eukaryotic elongation factor 1 alpha subunit. It mediates the entry of amino acyl tRNA into the free site of ribosome. This elongation factor is functional analog of EFTU in prokaryotes. Second elongation factor is the EEF1 beta gamma subunit, which is functional analog of EFTS in prokaryotes. It serves as gaunin exchange nucleotide factor for EEF1 and catalyzes release of GDP from EEF1. Third elongation factor is the EEF2, a functional analog of EEFG. It is a translocase enzyme, which catalyzes the translocation of tRNA and mRNA down the ribosome. Now let's see what are the release factors. We have two class of release factors in eukaryotes, class 1 and class 2. In class 1 we have E, RF1 factor and in class 2 we have ERF3. From class 1, ERF1 recognizes all the three stop codons with UAA, UAG and UGA. And from class 2 factors, the ERF3 helps in binding the GTP molecule with ERF1 factor. But still the specific role of ERF3 molecule is unknown. And at last we have the RRF which is ribosomal recycling factor. This RRF plus elongation factor G, which is in eukaryotes EEF2, when both these factors combine 
in presence of GTP, this mediates the dissociation of ribosomal units. So this concludes the factors in eukaryotes. In the next video, we'll be discussing about the mechanism of translation in prokaryotes in detail, starting from pre-initiation steps. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon and also make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.